Hi everybody, welcome to Petra's Happy Place. Today, um, I want to address a situation or actually a question that I know some of you might be asking, um, especially those of you that are not really familiar with Bible translations. So, um, I, by the way, welcome. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for, for hanging out with me for a little bit today. I've got my co-host, <laughs> we've got uh, my co-host Lila, who's going to get into a fight here in just a second with the cat, and uh, okay, so we're good. So um, I don't want to spend too much time on this because there are many other channels that can deal with Bible translations. If you just put in the search bar on YouTube, Bible translation, Bible translations, I'm sure you're going to get tons of hits. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick overview because there are many times where where um, uh, there's terms that are being used that you might not know what, what it's all about. Um, and to tell you the truth, I don't understand all of that either all the time. Um, so um, I just thought I'm just going to be very generalized. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like very rudimentary type of introduction, okay? So if you could look at a scale... Um, not, not like one to 10, one being not good or whatever, but, um, just a scale on one end, you have a more formal translation. Okay. Um, that is going to be the kind of Bible where, um, they're going to be more precise in the words that they use and how they translate things um, from <clears throat> the original Hebrew and Greek to make sure that they are getting as close to the exact words that were used. And that takes a lot of time and effort. To, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys can imagine um, so many scholars out there um, working on those translations. <clears throat> now, who would some who would this appeal to? This this kind of Bible or this kind of translation would appeal to, I believe, a studier, somebody who likes to study and dig into uh, what is this what does this word mean and and how how is it used in the sentence and um just really likes to dig in and know that information for themselves um so um that's who that would appeal to now i'm going to give you a, a couple of different translations that you would look for if that was your um if that's your interest. You have the King James Version, you have the New King James Version, you have the New American Standard, you have the um, English Standard, um, and then you also have the new one, the Legacy Standard, okay? So those are several that are on that end, okay? They're the more formal, the more word for word, okay? Then the other end, you're going to have those things that are more thought for thought, okay? So instead of um, interpreting each individual word, what they'll do is they'll take a sentence and they'll turn it into what modern English would be, if, if you'll understand, without compromising the actual words, if you understand what I'm trying to say. 
So <clears throat> the original Greek might or Hebrew might use a word that is not used anymore in today's language. And so a thought for thought one would try to find a word that we would readily understand, okay? So um, then there's the middle of the road, <laughs> the middle section. Oh, let me give you a couple different translations that are on that end. Honestly, the only good translation that is, um, uh, that is going to be for me, and that's going to be the New Living Translation. Now, there are other Bibles that are out there, and to me, they're more paraphrased, and I don't care for that. The, um, a paraphrase basically is when one person goes through and decides what he believes it to mean and, and does the whole Bible like that. And so to me, that's not very accurate um, because there could be a lot of differences in something like that. Now, then there's the more middle of the road. And in the middle of the road, you'll have some from both ends. You'll have um, some from the word for word, especially if the word is a really important word that there's no English translation for and it might not make any sense but then there's also thought for thought okay now those a lot of people like because um oh let me go back okay so the formal one is more for people who study the one on the other end is somebody who just wants something just to read. They, they're they just going to be reading and there's not a whole lot of, um, I don't know, study. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's, it's, it's something that somebody can um, get their teeth used to, you know, the word, the Bible. Um, a lot of people start off with a New Living Translation or some kind of paraphrase and then kind of work their way up. Um, you know, so that's that's that one end. Now, the middle of the road, a lot of churches use those translations from the pulpit um, because they're easy to read uh, or easier to read. Um, but they also have some meat and some, some, some substance to it, okay? So I've got, th oh, and some of the different ones would be the um, Christian Standard Bible, the um, uh, New International Version. Now, there's a lot of other translations that kind of fall in that medium, but they're not as well-known, okay? There's the Revised Standard, and there's, I, I don't even know all of them. <laughs> That's how many there are. There's just so many, I can't, I can't put my finger on them. So I've got one from each, trans, uh, I've got one from each category, and I thought I would pick out a, a scripture, and I would read them from all three so you could see the difference in how they read. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person who I almost like need to see it. Um, unfortunately, I am not going to be able to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to read slowly enough for you guys to catch on to kind of get a good feel for what they say. Okay, um, so let's start with the one formal end. Okay, now I've got my New American Standard, which is on that end. This puppy is just <laughs> really needy right now. Okay, so I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm. I thought that maybe that would be one um, translation that many people might be familiar with. So I picked that one. And 
just um, remember that this is going to be a more word-for-word -word translation. It's going to sound a little bit more formal. It might be one of those translations that, oh, that's very familiar to me. I know that because a lot of people grew up with something like this, okay? <clears throat> so it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so there's that one. That was very familiar to you guys, right? Because a lot of people, like I said, grew up with that. Now I'm going to take um, another translation. This is the... Um, Christian Standard, the CSB, that's a Christian Standard Bible, and I'm going to read from there. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I have what I need. He lets me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Okay, there's some very distinguished phrases in there, right? A little bit different. Now I'm gonna read from the New Living Translation, which is the all the way to the other end, the more thought for thought. And you're gonna see that, that you're gonna see that progression, okay, from that the New American Stand, no, excuse me, the New King James, that was the formal, then the middle, now this is the other end, the most thought for thought. The Lord is my shepherd, <clears throat> I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I love all three of those, <laughs> and, and I think you can understand why, because they each have their merit, right? But so today, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to cover the categories, kind of, of the different translations. Um, this is it, by no means a comprehensive, you know, kind of study or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you. I hope you find it helpful. Um, and um, I'm also hoping that in the comment section below, you'll let me know, um, do you have a preference? Did you like one of these more than another? 
Um, do you use a certain one for your own personal Bible study? And does your church use the same uh, translation in the pulpit as you do at home? All interesting questions. I hope you'll be able to answer some of them for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed rest of your day whenever you're watching this. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.